The union territory of Jammu and Kashmir has been a flashpoint between India and Pakistan for over seven decades. The Himalayan region has been roiled by militant violence since the start of an anti-Indian insurgency in 1989 that left tens of thousands of civilians, soldiers and rebels dead, although violence recently had tapered off. The troubled region witnessed a spurt in militant attacks beginning on the day a new government under the leadership of Narendra Modi was sworn in. As many as four terror attacks in four days resulted in the death of at least 12 people, besides injuring dozens, thereby putting the spotlight back on the restive region. Our next report explores more. Main, Narendra Barely an hour before Narendra Modi was sworn in as India's Prime Minister for the third consecutive term on the 9th of June, terrorists ambushed a bus carrying Hindu pilgrims in the Riyasi district of Jammu and Kashmir. Nine people, including the driver and the conductor, were killed and at least 33 wounded in the firing which resulted in the bus plunging into a deep gorge. It's a very unfortunate incident that happened. Initial reports suggest that militants were waiting there in an ambush and they fired on the bus. The bus was moving from Shiv Khori towards Katra city. The driver lost control and the bus fell into the deep gorge. The bus was on its way to the base camp of famous Hindu shrine Mata Vaishno Devi when it came under attack. Reportedly, the militants kept on firing even after the bus fell into the gorge. Our bus fell into the gorge due to the firing. After tumbling down five to six times, the bus got stuck on a large rock. Everyone was injured in the fall. Passengers were lying here and there, some unconscious and some thrown out of the bus. Even after the fall, the firing continued for 10 to 15 minutes. Pakistan backed the resistance front, an offshoot of the terror outfit Lashkar e Taiba, claimed responsibility for the attack. India designated the resistance front as a terrorist organization last year. The terrorist organization was founded in 2019 following the abrogation of Article 370, which granted special status to Jammu and Kashmir. The Jammu and Kashmir police released a sketch of one of the militants and announced a reward of 20 lakh rupees for fruitful information about him. Leaving no stone unturned, the search operation to nab the terrorists has been extended to far-flung areas of the Riyasi district including Arnas and Mahor areas, notorious for providing safe haven to terrorists between 1995 and 2005. As many as 50 people have been detained so far in connection with the terror attack. The mayhem continued a couple of days later, on Tuesday, when overnight gun battles in Kathua killed two militants and a paramilitary soldier besides injuring a civilian and six security personnel. The same night, in Doda's tourist spot, Chattergala, militants targeted a joint police and army post, injuring five soldiers and a special police officer. Hours later, in the same Doda district's Kota Top area near Gando, a special police officer was injured after a joint team of police and paramilitary forces came under fire from militants. It was the fourth such incident in Jammu since Sunday. On Wednesday, during the search operation in Katua, the Indian security forces recovered a huge stash of arms, ammunition, cash and other supplies. And blamed India's arch-rival Pakistan for the recent spurt in terror attacks. Our hostile neighbor wants to damage our peaceful environment. This infiltration appears to be a fresh one. The sudden rise in violence is of concern considering the number of local militants was dropping, although 70 to 80 foreign militants are still believed to be active. Also noteworthy is the fact that the recent attacks come on the heels of a large voter turnout, 58.6%, 
in the recently held parliamentary elections, which is the highest in 35 years. New Delhi has long accused Islamabad of harboring militants and disrupting peace in the region, a charge Pakistan denies. Given the recent spurt in attacks in Jammu and Kashmir immediately after successful elections, Pakistan will find it tough to deny its role as an agent provocateur.